This episode is sponsored by Simply Safe. It truly is incredible how much can change in a year. For example, this is the cabin interior from last year. At the time, it seemed to be more of a glorified tool shed than anything else, but glorious it was. As my dad and I continued to refine the interior by sanding the logs, chinking between the courses, cladding the gables, dormers, trimming the windows, installing the stove, and insulating the floor, it has become what it is today, a cozy cabin in the making. If things can change this much in a year, I can't wait to see what the cabin will look like in another year's time. But as for today, I'll be installing the main flooring with shiplap pine boards and penny inlays. So let's get to it.
While we wait for the storm to pass, I'd like to thank Simply Safe for sponsoring this episode. Simply Safe is an award-winning home security system that is effective, flexible, and easy to use. I started using Simply Safe several years ago to protect my grandfather's property, and I liked the system so much that I ended up installing one in my home as well. The great thing about the Simply Safe system is that you don't need to schedule a service appointment to have it set up. In fact, once it was shipped to my door, I had the system up and running in about 30 minutes. Not only is Simply Safe incredibly intuitive to use, but it's also flexible. For example, I've easily been able to add additional sensors to the system to suit my needs. Simply Safe also offers 24/7 protection with their live team of professionals who are ready to contact the authorities in case of emergency. And with Simply Safe's advanced response technology, they can confirm if the threat is real and get help there fast. Their monitoring plan costs less than a dollar a day, which is less than half the cost of other traditional home security brands. And since there's no long-term contracts, you can start and stop anytime with no hidden fees. I love Simply Safe because it's serious home security that is seriously easy to use, which is why I think you'll love it too. Save 20% on your Simply Safe security system when you sign up for their interactive monitoring plan and get your first month free. Visit simplysafe.com forward slash the outsider to learn more.
Well, as you can see, the pine flooring is in place. It's fastened down. Uh, I've got a half inch shiplap on these boards and uh, you'll see that I've got my first row of inlaid pennies over the screw heads. So I'm really excited to see uh, what the floor is going to look, look like with all the pennies in place, but this at least gives you a nice preview. So once the pennies are in, then I will give the floor a good sanding and then I'll do uh, three coats of polyurethane and then I'll give it a nice coating of protection. With the flooring almost complete, the next phase of the cabin build, the interior construction, is soon to follow. Still seems just like yesterday though that my dad and I were applying the chinking in here. When I look around, I see all the work that we've accomplished so far, but it's what's missing that gets me the most. I decided to leave the rest of the flooring work for another day because there were a couple jobs at the solar array that needed my attention. My first job at the array was to trim the branches above the panels, which have been partially blocking their sunlight. And less light means less power. When I built the array, some viewers wisely pointed out that I didn't anchor it into the ground. Instead, I built the framework on blocks, which I carefully leveled on top of the ground. The problem with this method is that if a strong enough wind were to hit the array, the solar panels could act as sails, pushing the array off its blocks. So why didn't I anchor the posts into the ground in the first place? Which I do agree, would have been the best option. The main reason is that the ground was far too rocky for me to dig the post holes by hand, and I didn't have the necessary equipment to do the job. The second reason is that the surrounding cedar forest creates an excellent windbreak for the array. Let me show you what I mean. I took this drone footage above the cedar forest when the winter wind was blowing particularly strong. My guess is that the wind above the trees was reaching gusts of up to 100 kilometers per hour that day, and I just about lost my drone to it. This footage was taken at the same time, or rather, mere minutes apart from when the drone footage was taken. Notice how calm it is on the forest floor, especially considering how violently the wind continued to buffet just 40 feet above my head. So the reason why I'm not worried about the solar array being blown off its blocks is because I've seen firsthand how well the cedar forest protects against the wind. Now, all that being said, I still might brace the array into the ground anyway, just to be on the safe side. But honestly, I'm more worried about a tree falling onto the solar panels because of the wind than the array itself being toppled because of it. I also built the framework much heavier than it needed to be, which obviously helps. Now that the branches have been cleared above the panels, my next job is to bury these cables, which run from the array all the way up to the cabin, which is about 100 feet away. Uh, so I'll show you here. The cables are suspended through the trees and I've got these ribbons on them as well to create some visibility. So the reason why I have these cables off the ground is to keep them out of reach of curious little critters, uh, particularly porcupines who would love to make a meal of these cables, which wouldn't be good for the porcupine and it wouldn't be good for me either. Uh, so I'm going to take a pickaxe now and dig a small trench all the way up to the cabin. I'll place these cables inside a conduit and I'll bury it under the ground. Uh, so it'll be out of sight, out of mind for the animals, and I won't have to worry about them. Now this could be a 15 minute job, or this could be a job that takes several hours. I'm just not sure. Uh, the problem is this ground is full of rocks and roots, so I might get into some problems as I'm digging the trench, but there's only one way to find out. So let's get started.
Okay, so I just finished burying the cables and they are running into the power pack which is at the back of the cabin and I'll show that to you now. So uh, obviously I've installed this not too long ago. It's uh, drawing power from the panels right now although the batteries are topped up so it's not drawing uh, you know, the full potential of what it can bring in from the panels. But when the batteries are down and the panels are going with full sunlight, I've been bringing in about a kilowatt of power with those four panels. Uh, so that's pretty good. Now the, uh, the power runs from the array through these uh, red and black cables, obviously a positive and a negative. It goes into the power pack and then it manages that power and sends it through these thick battery cables down into the battery box, which is below the cabin. Um, so it's in circuit with those batteries. Uh, anyway, this copper cable is the ground and uh, that goes into the ground obviously and then I got this red cable which runs outside to the gas generator and I still have to calibrate that but uh, the idea is in the winter time if there's not enough sun and the panels aren't able to pull in enough power then I can hook the generator up to the cable outside it's a 5000 watt generator so it would be able to charge these batteries in just over an hour from pretty much empty to full. So yeah, I'm gonna have this uh, little cabinet built and this will be closed in. And right now I'm standing in what will be the washroom. I'm gonna have a little bit of a stall here, but uh, that's for another episode. Uh, you can see I've got my little um, display there. I've got a full battery uh, icon, so the batteries are pretty much topped up. And I've got a happy face, which <laughs> which means that the batteries are happy. It's not overcharged, not undercharged. They're performing exactly as they should. So yeah, I think I'm gonna end the episode here. Um, it might be a shorter one, but there was lots of work behind the scenes. It's, uh, it's a lot of measuring and, and detail work, especially with the flooring, so it took some time. I'm looking forward to getting the rest of the pennies in and the three coats of polyurethane down to protect the floor. And then we can start building out this cabin, which I'm so excited for. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, my friends, stay safe, be well, and God bless.